Hey everybody, okay, this is podcast number uh, three, and um, let's go over podcast one and two. Obviously, we went over the overview and um, the registration and why you want to do business with the government, um, and then about the process of bid capture, proposal writing, and submission. Then in podcast number two, we went over um, the, yep, there's my camera. Okay, we went over the due date uh, and different things in the RFPs and RFQs, request for quote, request for proposals that you need to look for, how to submit, where to submit, um, the due date, of course, again, very important, uh, and putting your proposal together. And again, we can help you out. Give us a call at the office, 505-585-1749, or just email me with questions uh, at mike at govbidpro.com. So this podcast number two kind of wraps up the whole thing. It answers this question, what do you do next, right? You found the bid, you love the bid, it's due in two weeks, you put a proposal together, you've got all your submission requirements, you've sourced your uh, price, you've got a nice proposal out there that you've saved as PDF, you've emailed it to uh, John Smith at Navy.mil, now what do you do? Uh, so that's really the type of uh, conversation we need to have in, in this podcast about the back office contracts, support, the back office, back office activities that you want to have in place as part of your protocol. Number one, uh, you do want to have some kind of follow-up that you do with uh, back office contract support. So what we tell you to do is create an Excel spreadsheet we can send you one. Uh, and, and at the top is the bids that are due in the future. Uh, the middle part are the bids that are due pretty soon, next couple days that you're ready to go. Uh, and then the bottom piece is uh, is the bids that you've completed and sent in already. So you've got a pipeline of bids that are due in the future, uh, bids that are um, due pretty soon that you need to wrap up and have the proposal ready, and then bids that you've submitted, one, two, and three. And then so you follow up with the bids that you've submitted, and you've got this... Excel sheet that's almost like a CRM that uh, you you know when to follow up. I would follow up maybe about three or four days after uh, the bid is the bid is due and make sure that they got it. Uh, and if there's anything missing that that they can uh, tell you, and also make sure to mo look for those modification those amendments. Okay, so now you've followed up. Um, make sure if you're selling product to follow up with your supplier. Make sure the price is still good. That's another piece of the follow up. Um, also a piece of the back office contract support. And that's really what, what we talk about is post award. Okay. And again, the, the notes are below here in the, in the um, podcast three notes, PDF, go ahead and download that uh, contract modification. This is a separate podcast. We can talk about for a half an hour, uh, even longer than that is sometimes what happens is a government, the government's going to issue a purchase order or contract and then have to make a modification you're entitled to not accept that modification. Every case is different. And we go over that with uh, our full service uh, back office contract support here at GovBid Pro. We, talk, we, we, we help uh, and consult and coach our, our clients in back office, back office contract support. So that's a part of uh, the back office activities. Uh, another piece, again, it's in your notes, uh, is the logistics. So you want to, if you're in, say, Florida and you've got to deliver in... Um, say Miramar in San Diego, you've got to figure out the logistics of how to deliver. And then there's a concept called 30 days ARO. So for especially those folks that are selling product, what that means is ARO stands for after receipt of order. So the government's going to say, hey, this is 30 days ARO, meaning you're going to deliver within 30 days of purchase order issuance. So if they issue the, the purchase order June 1, you've got to deliver the product by July 1st. So you've got time to set up your financing and uh, deal with your suppliers and the logistics, your FedEx and, and UPS, whoever you use, a post office, whoever you use to deliver the product. Uh, if it's software and you've got to email them a link, you've got to deliver by July 1. So that's the logistics piece, just to kind of scratch the surface on that. Okay, finally, um, I want to talk about invoicing the government. We talked about contract modification, logistics, uh, obviously, the follow-ups, the, the last piece is, of course, invoicing the government. The government has a system, the federal government has a system in place called WAWF, 
and they, that's called white area workflow. And we have a training for that uh, that takes a couple hours to, to learn how to train to do your invoices there. Everything has to match, as you can imagine, all T's are crossed, I's are dotted, and then it, it, it's submitted. Normally, standard is net 30 terms. Net 30 meaning if you invoice the government today, June 1, they owe you the, the funds by July 1. Does the government pay slow? Yes, normally they do. But um, I've seen net, uh, net 30 and, and companies getting paid in 15 days. So, and some higher than 30 days, but the government always pays. Um, with your SLED, state local education, we talked about that in earlier podcasts. You're, normally you can email uh, or send in your invoices and create an invoice. We've got templates for you to use. Again, if you've got any questions, definitely give us a call 505-585-1749 or email us at mike at govbidpro.com. That's my email. Uh, we've talked about back office contract support, meaning follow up with your uh, the bids that you've, you've submitted uh, and keep a schedule. Uh, a little bit about contract modification. We can go over that in future trainings. Uh, the logistics, making sure that you've got your timing on a 30 days ARO, it might be a higher number, and then, of course, invoicing the government. So that's all your back office contract post-award activities. Thanks very much for joining us in the podcast. We'll have future podcasts, and if you've got any questions, feel free to email or call us. Thanks.